Miscanthus giganteus is a tall perennial grass that has potential for use in ethanol production. It is a sterile, non-invasive grass that can grow up to 13 feet tall. It requires little or no fertilizer and can be harvested in December or January and stored in bales until it is needed. In a new study, researchers at the University of Illinois demonstrate that miscanthus is significantly more productive than other common biofuels crops. Crop sciences professor Stephen Long has spent much of the last decade studying miscanthus in field trials at Illinois. When I moved here from Europe in 1999. I've been working with miscanthus in Europe, but really all the interest in the US in potential bioenergy crops was in switchgrass, which is a distantly related species. Switchgrass had been grown here as a forage crop, um, and so it was being also tested as a bioenergy crop. And we had no idea really as to whether switchgrass was better than miscanthus or vice versa. So, so looking at the yields that have been obtained in similar climate zones in Europe, we set up trials basically with four plots of miscanthus and four plots of switchgrass alongside the miscanthus. And we did that initially in northern Illinois, central Illinois and southern. Since then we've added on four more sites around Illinois. What we found in Illinois was that the miscanthus actually produced at least double the biomass of the switchgrass. One reason why miscanthus yields more biomass than corn is that it, it, it produces green leaves about six weeks earlier. So you know, if you get those bright days in May when sunlight is falling on so bare soil, in a miscanthus field it's falling on leaves. And of course, similarly, at the end of August, when the corn leaves are dying, miscanthus leaves are still bright green, and they carry on like that until in October. So those sunny days you have in May and in September, miscanthus uses the sunlight when corn doesn't. And that's a key to why it is more productive. When we started, you know, we were, we really had to almost put the rhizomes in by hand. So. Doing an acre a day with a team of 30 people was just about possible. Now we've been able to sort of mechanize that and we can do maybe 15 acres a day. We know there is patented equipment in, in Europe which can do about 50 acres a, a day. So so it's, it's moving forward quite rapidly. One of the things we found which is actually unfortunately different from Europe is they're able to leave their crop standing. So typically what happens is in, in November, the shoots die. You get an annual crop of shoots, so they die. They move the nutrients into the root system. So it's important that you wait until after that's happened because then you're not having to apply fertilizer the next year. After that's completed, you've then got these dead stems standing in the field. What they found in Europe was they could wait four or five months and really lose very little of their material. What we found here was we really lose the material pretty well from December onwards. We think that's just because our winters are harsher and the stems are being fragmented by the very cold weather. So our recommendation now to growers is that they really harvest at the first opportunity they have in in December or early January. Of course it, that is a good time to harvest because if it's a dry spell the atmosphere is extremely dry so the material you're harvesting is dry. Once you've baled it though we've also found that you can leave those bales in the field for a very long time particularly if you put tarps over them. The material doesn't break down even under damp conditions. An important advantage of this in the system of biofuels is, you know, if you think of a, a plant producing a, you know, millions of gallons of ethanol, then you're going to need you know, millions of tons of biomass, and you'd need a huge storage facility for that. You would also, if you were putting it all there after harvest, it would put a strain on the transportation system. So what we think you'd be able to do is a farmer would store it on their land 
and then they'd be responsible for providing July miscanthus or October miscanthus and so on. And of course, the longer they have to store it, the more premium they'd be paid for that biomass. By using, for example, miscanthus, and you know, we don't know that miscanthus is the best plant of this type out there. There may be even better ones. We can produce ethanol using a lot less land than we're using at present doing this with corn. 